Just another case about a missing woman who everyone knows was murdered. She was last seen here in Glen Burnie, Maryland at her apartment at Chesapeake Glen. On October 11th, Melanie had spent the day with her good friend Amy. Melanie tagged along with Amy while she went to go get her nails done at J Nails and Spa. They spent most of the day together until the early evening when they parted ways and Melanie went home. She was seen coming home on the surveillance cameras at her apartments. This would most likely be the last time that anyone would see Melanie. The next day, Amy texts Mal about the yucky, rainy, cold day. She gets a response around 9 a.m. of a crying emoji, and her phone is going straight to voicemail after she tries calling her. And Friday evening, Melanie never shows up for work. Friends and family search the whole neighborhood. They posted flyers in all the buildings close by. They went to all the near restaurants and gas stations and local area supermarkets to post flyers and ask if anyone had seen Melanie. Melanie lived on the third floor of her apartment building. People were wondering how she got out of her apartments. They searched the area and they found absolutely nothing that would give them any idea what happened to Mel. The security camera out front never revealed her leaving that evening. In fact, it's never revealed her ever leaving her building. Her car still remained parked out front where she left it the night before. The day she was reported missing, police were able to access her apartment. They noted that all of her belongings were still there, minus her ID, her bank card, her house key, and cell phone. They also noted that there was multiple suitcases laying around. Melanie had disappeared right from her apartment. No one would ever hear from her again. The only one who seemed to have absolutely no concern for Melanie's missing was her boyfriend, Joe. On Tuesday, October 16th, friends and family happened to come across Joe in the parking lot while they were searching the property. He said the last time he talked to her was last Friday, and she was telling him how she was going to get her nails done with Amy.
He told them how Melanie's cores were showing through on her tires and that they were unsafe to drive on. He assumed that Amy had picked her up to go to the nail salon. He explains that J Nails and Spa is the place that Melanie likes to go. And he was very knowledgeable of the place. He seemed to know the area very well and explained where it was, all the landmarks, and how to get there. They asked him if he would attend a search party the following day and he said he could not because he has to talk to the police and has a viewing to go to. They asked him if he would attend a search party afterwards, but all he did was nod yes and say nothing. They asked if he had any idea where she could be, and he said no. All he could say was Friday morning was the last time he talked to her. When asked if she'd ever went missing before, he said that yeah, sometimes maybe for a couple weeks if they've had an argument, but this time there was no argument and they were getting along just fine. He was asked if she had taken her medications with her and he said no, that she was saving them for the next time she went to pain management, so she would still have some in her system. He was asked if he had went by the nail salon to see if they had seen her and he said that he talked with an Asian man who did not see her. He was asked if any clothing or anything else was missing. His response was no, that everything looked normal and ordinary as it should. They ask him again if he'll attend the search party and he says sure. He then stated that Friday he had texted her and asked her if on her way home from work if she could pick him up some chewing tobacco. Afterwards, he fell asleep watching TV. He woke up later thinking she had already gone to work. He says he texted her again to see if she was already gone to work. She normally leaves for work around 12.45 a.m. and normally would text him when she made it there and wait for Amy to show up so they could start their shift. They asked him what time that he sent these text messages and he said he couldn't tell them because the police had resent them and the only way that he would be able to find out is to look at his phone records. He thought that maybe his phone was malfunctioning because the messages had come back undelivered. He added that he also texted his daughter and she was responding and receiving his text. He said, quote unquote, it's been havoc because it's like, where could she be? Where did she go? It's like not answering, you know, text and all. And it's like, what the hell's going on? He understood why she might not take her car anywhere because her tires were bad. And he said they had planned to get new tires on Sunday. He added that's why she called out of work last Thursday because of the rain and it was unsafe. are investigating reports of human remains found. Investigators are on the scene in Glen Burnie and that's where Sky Team 11 and Captain Roy Taylor join us. Roy, what can you tell us? Last night, uh, human remains were discovered on the property of the Church of the Good Shepherd at the 1400 block of Furnace Avenue here in Glen Burnie. Now, numerous police agencies are here at the scene. They're also checking for more evidence as to what they found. They actually have boats in the water, side sand sonar, uh, and a search is ongoing right now. They still haven't given us much information as to the full nature of what they've recovered. But as you can see, there is a strong investigation going on at this location. As we get more, we'll update you reporting live in Sky Team 11. I'm Captain Roy Taylor. Out on the water of Marley Creek, searching. Tuesday evening, we received a call from a woman who was walking her dog who said she thought she found um, human remains. We went out, medical examiner came out and said, yes, they do think it's human remains. So for the last two days, we've been searching the area um, for additional remains. Wednesday, they searched on land with cadaver dogs. They found nothing, so Thursday, they took to the water, looking for more of the same remains. The fire department, Coast Guard, and Department of Natural Resources helped in the search. Right now, we are um, pulling out all the stops because we don't know the cause of death yet. This still could be a natural death, we don't know, so we're gonna handle it as if it's not, just in case. 
Police don't have any information on their remains, like age, gender, or race. They're waiting on the medical examiner for that information and to determine the cause of death. It's crazy. It, it's scary, honestly. It's scary to think that that happened in your backyard. Neighbors who live off Furnace Avenue in Glen Burnie say they heard about the partial remains found on the shore, and they've seen the increased police presence in the area. They are just as curious as the police to find out what happened. Of course I want to know what happened. I want to know if it was like a murder or somebody just washed up or, you know, what happened. But I don't, I, I hope it's not a murder. Police say they do not plan to search again tomorrow. Reporting live in Glen Burnie, Kim Day, CWBAL. Melanie's friends and family searched the whole area endlessly. They searched all along the shore that was accessible. They searched all through the wooded areas surrounding the water and interviewed local bar owners to see if they knew anything or heard anything or saw anything. Melanie's friends and family were still clueless to what might have happened to her. They weren't really even positive that these remains that were found here were even that of Melanie. Everyone was just keeping their hope alive and hoping that Melanie was somewhere doing okay. They couldn't fathom the fact that she might be murdered or even possibly dismembered. The days began to drag. Waiting on the DNA test on the remains was agonizing. The waiting for results was long, so family and friends just continued to keep posting flyers throughout Point Pleasant and throughout Chesapeake Glen Apartments and surrounding areas. One day, while riding around Point Pleasant, 
they came across a family that lived on Furnace Avenue. The property contained a large parking lot with multiple abandoned houses, except for one, where a family lived that claimed they had seen some unusual activity around the time that Melanie went missing. They had returned home one evening to find two unfamiliar vehicles parked on their property. A large black pickup truck with big rims parked at the boat launch and a silver SUV parked at the dumpster. They searched the area trying to locate the owners of the vehicles and never did find anyone. And when they woke the next morning, the vehicles were gone. People wondered if this had anything to do with Melanie's disappearance. On January 12, 2019, Melanie's family finds out the horrible news. DNA results confirmed that the remains found were that of Melanie Melanie. Morning woman was reported missing, and despite police identifying partial human remains found in the area as hers, her family and friends, they still want answers. Sean Stryker live in Glen Burnie for us tonight with the family's plea for someone to come forward with information. Sean? Nicole, that body part was found just behind the Church of the Good Shepherd. Since that time, they've conducted interviews, they've uh, investigated leads, they've collected a lot of evidence. However, they haven't been able to provide any additional information to the family. She's really all I ever had. You know? With tears in his eyes, Ryan Rose remembers his mother, Melanie Mullaney. She loved her kids. And it's been like a really, really, uh, Horrible time for me. Anne Arundel County Police are investigating this as a missing person case. Friends and family believe she was killed. We don't know anything. And it's just crazy. Like, like what's going on? The Glen Burnie woman was reported missing on October 13th, 2019. Ten days later, a body part that was later confirmed to be Melanie's was found along the shores of Marley Creek. Melanie was last seen at her home here in Glen Burnie in the Chesapeake Glen apartment complex. And her friends and family are asking for anyone with information to come forward. Because so much time's gone by, it really depends on anybody who would have seen anything. She made it from her apartment to a lake on the side of the water. So somebody had to see something. At least say even the smallest details could help reveal what happened. Every piece of evidence has a value, and that in itself may not help us locate Melanie, but it may give us additional avenues of investigation, which will hopefully provide this family some closure. If we can't have a memorial, a burial, or anything like we don't have anything to do that with. Now, again, if you have any information, you're asked to contact the Anne Arundel County Police or Crime Stoppers. Family and friends are still looking for answers and trying to figure out what happened to Melanie Melanie. And now they're turning to the public. We need them to, to speak up because Melanie needs justice. The 45-year-old Glenn Burney woman was reported missing on October 13, 2018. A week and a half later, partial human remains were found on the shoreline of Marley Creek, later determined to belong to Melanie. With little information over a year later, her daughter says it's been a very painful time for the family. The longer I go on not knowing anything or just not hearing anything and all that stuff, it and it helps me cope, but at the same time, it makes me feel like nothing's going to happen. Anne Arundel County Police still consider this a missing persons case, and now we're offering $10,000 for information. Metro Crime Stoppers is also putting up $2,000, and the family another grant. Investigators hope this will help solve the case. Well, a year has gone by. If anyone in involved in the case has had a change of heart, we ask them to reach out to us. And family and friends are hoping for the same thing. We're hoping and praying that somebody will just let us know what happened. And investigators are asking anyone with information about this case to come forward and contact Anne Arundel County Police. At Anne Arundel County Police.
Melanie's case would still remain a missing persons case. The coroner stated that he could not determine a cause of death from what was found. It was a survivable injury and he could not conclude that it was a homicide. A friend of the family called the coroner's office. They told her that the injury was probably caused by someone and not from being in the water. Detectives are still treating this as a homicide, even though legally it's a missing persons case. All the family can do now is wait and hope that the police will solve Melanie's case. That maybe someone will come forward and say what they saw that night. There had to be some kind of a witness between Melanie's apartment and the neighborhood of Point Pleasant. Maybe somebody watching this will point them in the right direction. Maybe someone watching this could be a witness and they saw something. It would be great because the family could really use a little bit of closure. Thank you.